Thank you very much. Thanks for coming to, my, to this uh, talk about uh, toolbox containers. Um, yeah, as introduced, I'm, I'm Jens Peterson. I work at Red Hat for quite a long, long time on uh, OS development. Um, it's great to be back in person here. Um, and uh, yeah, so just to motivate a little bit about, uh, so I've been using these toolbox containers for quite a while. Uh, I just find it really nice to have a, a my sort of development environment is completely separate from the system environment, so I can choose to upgrade when I want, or, or I can use an older system sometimes if I need something there. Um, um, yeah, so today I'll mainly be talking about two projects um, which I've contributed to, but I'm not the main developer. I just want to say up front that I'm not taking credit for this. Uh, but so one is Toolbox, another is DistroBox. Um, they're somewhat similar, but they also have some slight differences. Um, yeah, as we'll see. Um, so uh, yeah, so what's a Toolbox container? Um, basically, it's just a so-called pet container, which means it's not it's something that you're taking care of that sort of that's maybe is valuable to you. Um, something you might be using for a longer period of time. Um, and yeah, so it would be using Podman or Docker. And uh, the, the special thing about it is that it has access so, to your home directory and uh, desktop environment and um, system resources and so on. So um, yeah, but I mean, obviously the, the environment in the container is different from the system environment usually, or, well, it doesn't have to be. You might want to have it install packages which you don't want in the system because you don't want to mess around, mess up your system, uh, but you just want, uh, yeah, you still need those tools or applications. Um, so I'm going to approach this. Um, <laughs> these four fundamental questions, why, how, uh, what, and who. So. Let's start with the why a bit more. Um, yeah, so when the main, yeah, I think I more or less covered some of this, but um, so yeah, there's two main use cases. I mean, originally the Toolbox project came up in the context of OS3 um, operating systems where you kind of have an immutable operating system, but then it's a bit awkward to like have development tools and so on in that kind of environment, so then you, and you'd have a toolbox container where you could install your compilers and IDEs and so on. Um, but um, yeah, and also another advantage of say of, of toolboxes compared to say using a VM or something is that it's a lot less resource intensive. So you can save uh, memory and uh, disk space and so on. Whereas a VM what might need 10, 20 gigabytes to run in. Um, uh, a, a, a toolbox container will just share memory with the system and also disk space and so on. So, um, yeah, it's quite good in that sense. Um, so, I'm not really going to go into a lot of detail because it's a very short talk. Um, but, yeah, so basically they're just, um, especially under Podman, they're rootless, uh, privileged user containers. Um, and then they're, yeah, they're using like namespaces and bind mounts um, to bring like sockets and system directories and so on um, into your toolbox. And um, so usually it's a sort of two-step process. First you create the toolbox and then you enter it or you can also run um, directly from your host shell. But um, 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 so yeah, so today I want to demo um, this toolbox and also distrobox, which are the two main projects which are kind of for sort of interactive graphical um, environments. Um, so first, yeah, there's uh, toolbox, um, which is now kind of posted in this uh, uh, containers org on, on GitHub. Um, so it was originally started by Debashi Ray in uh, 2018. Um, originally it was just a shell script, um, but then it was rewritten later in Golang. Uh, the idea was that, that Golang would 
bring it closer to Podman and, and most of the container tools and so on are written in uh, Golang. So, though I think in practice it's more just calling out to Podman these days. But um, um, so yeah, it's packaged in Fedora from from the beginning, and also in, available in RHEL and Arch, and also it's available in Debian and uh, Ubuntu now. Um, yeah. And this, I guess the, the, one of the differences between Toolbox and DistroBox is that Toolbox requires custom uh, container images. So it kind of assumes that certain tools and, well, some minor files are in place, um, unlike a DistroBox, which can use uh, standard uh, distro containers uh, to, to build its toolboxes. Um, and uh, yeah, so in Fedora, we have this Fedora toolbox uh, image, and uh, which I also helped to maintain a little. And also in RHEL, we also have a toolbox. Uh, uh, yeah, this is the UBI, but there's also an official RHEL uh, toolbox container. But then in last year, the community kind of <laughs> got tired of waiting. And so yeah, various people, also some of Red Hat, helped to create this new repository for other operating systems. So now there are a lot more, lot more uh, toolbox containers available for lots of different uh, distros listed here. So that's quite a nice uh, development. Um, yeah, so maybe I can show a bit. Um, so I have a shell here. Um, so this 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 is actually a VM running on my laptop, and um, yeah, and uh, let's see. So, so here here's a list of. Um, I should make it bigger. Yeah, as you can see that there's, there's various uh, toolbox images here, uh, like for CentOS, Ubuntu, uh, Fedora RHEL. And I've got a few, so let, let's try to uh, enter one. Um, okay, and you see this little uh, box here at the side here in purple. It's just to show you it's a toolbox um, container. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I've actually, well, for example. My host system, I, I don't have uh, Emacs, but I, I installed uh, Emacs over here, so I can. Oops. Yeah. I actually have this soft code here too, but um, anyway. Um, that's um, what else can I show? So, uh, Perhaps I'll move on um, to, um, uh, well, actually I could, okay, I can show one more. This is an Ubuntu toolbox, um, so yeah, it's um, and, uh, yeah, I can do uh, something like that. Okay. <coughs> anyway, yeah, so that's running uh, the Ubuntu uh, inside. Uh, this Fedora system. Um, yeah, and 
So I have access to all my home directory here, and as you can see, yeah, I could I could install some graphical application and run it. Um, all right. Um, let's move on to Torbo to Distrobox. Sorry. Um, this is nice uh, graphic. So this is a community project um, started in in 2021, um, and it's all. I think it's originally it was a port of. Okay, thank you of the uh, toolbox uh, shell script. Um, so it, it takes a bit of a different approach. Like I said, it, it doesn't need custom um, custom images. Um, and it supports a quite a wide range of distros, probably more than, than toolbox does. Um, yeah, there's, um, I'm sure we can see this. Um, it's a file here. Um, yeah, this, so it's, this, is, it, this is the distro that it runs on, I think, and also, uh, oh, you can also see where it's packaged here, sorry. Um, I think OpenSUSE is also uh, using it. Um, so it also supports toolbox containers, so you can use <coughs> like this uh, repository I mentioned earlier of the toolbox containers. Um, and then, yeah, there's lots of different distros that are supported. Um, sounds quite nice. Um, and, um, yeah, and it has some other nice features. For example, um, you can set a different home directory. So if you're worried about uh, interfering with, say, your, uh, to your home directory files or something, then you can create a distro box toolbox, which uses different uh, home directory. Um, it also has some other good things. It, it has, for example, a dry run option, which will show you like the commands that are, like the podman commands and so on that are being run. Um, it also has support for kind of ephemeral or short-lived short uh, toolboxes. So you can just start up an ephemeral toolbox, test something, and then uh, go out again and it will just disappear. Uh, so that's quite good. Um, and uh, so yeah, I think Toolbox is good for developers, also testers. And I often use it, I often want to compare something in one version of the operating system with another version, or if I'm debugging something, I want to check if something's fixed in a newer, um, newer library, and things like that. Um, also, it can be used, so it's particularly, particularly on, say, OS trees for sort of um, system troubleshooting as well, where maybe some of the tools that you want are not available in the system, but you can then put them in a toolbox and uh, run them there. Um, yeah, um, so that's really the talk. Um, yeah, the, uh, projects and my contact details. Um, happy to take any questions you may have. <clears throat> Hello, thanks for the presentation. Uh, can I saw that you you open a, a GUI version of Emacs, right? Uh, UI version of Emacs. So, so my question is: Can we run any UI, any GUI, without uh, complex configurations like in Docker? Like, can we open browser or anything easily in Toolbox? Anything? Okay. So, no, no complex configurations required for that. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you. So, by the help of this digital box, okay, and there will be the new image of OS. The, there is only one kernel and the process one. Then any other distros is with digital box. Okay, I think it's interesting. And I have another question is um, because we talk about the container OS, like core OS, yeah, and um, the OS is uh, read-only, so 
when we debug, we will install a debug container. Yeah. Uh, uh, what kind of tools we will you install in this debug toolbox, and is it suitable to for for the uh, maintenance on Netlify network? You have, or just uh, it's just suitable for use uh, for the SI team, like this way. Just put all the debugging tools in this container. Is it okay? I think I, I, I want to so hear some uh, advices from you. So yeah, you're right. The, the, the kernel, yeah, so the, the toolbox depends on the system kernel. So there can be issues with certain, and one, one, one issue is like with drivers and so on, like uh, and GPUs and or, you know, things like that. So ideally it should have the same, um, ideally the, the distribox and the kernel should kind of be, uh, yeah, um, for the same kernel. And also the, the, there's no system D running in the, uh, in the containers, so that, is a problem like um, some services uh, may not work um, in the toolbox, so that's a limitation. Uh, as for the troubleshooting, yeah, to be honest, I haven't done it in my lab myself, but yeah, for example, even the core OS is moving to use toolbox. They previously had their own kind of simpler toolbox. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it could be like some debuggers or um, network uh, I don't know, troubleshooting tools or something. I, Good question. Thank you very much. Is there a demo mode or background mode in toolbox like uh, can? So the, the, these, these green um, toolboxes are still running, actually, even in the background. And no, another thing I, I didn't show is that you can, um, yeah, um, you can also run applications from the host. I mean, from the uh, toolbox just using this one command. Um, one, one other thing I forgot is the distro box also allows you to export um, desktop files to the host, um, host desktop, yeah, the, uh, so you can uh, like see, uh, I think I had one example, uh, this, this GTK demo, <laughs> it's not very exciting, but it's, it's actually running in a, uh, a distro box. Hello, hello. So uh, I just want to ask uh, one question. So how uh, my understanding is that container you need a process keep running like PID one or something that so that the container stays alive. Looks like on your case it's staying alive because you know uh, you can do it. So how that is being handled, and uh, is it being recommended? How how can we uh, spawn up multiple processes? Is it recommended to do like you know we can spawn up uh, multiple processes? Like how we can handle that? Right. Um, yeah, good questions. Um, yeah, I mean, system days running on, on the host system. Um, there's also something called con, con run, which is kind of a container monitor, uh, which is sort of works together with Podman. So it checks that the container is sort of continues to run. Um, and yeah, you, you can run multiple processes in, in within one uh, container. It's it feels like just a normal like shell or other you know, desktop um, environment. So yeah, you can have multiple processes running there. Um, yeah, you can if you want. Yeah, 
I mean, I, I'm, I usually have two robots running in the foreground in my shell, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, there's also integration in uh, this GNOME terminal so that uh, if you create a new tab, it, it automatically starts up in, a, in the same toolbox that you're already running. So, um, yeah. Okay, any more questions? Thank you very much. Thanks for your attention.